Here's a look at this day in history. August 17th. In 1790, the nation's capital moved from New York to Philadelphia. It would make its final move to Washington, D.C. in 1800. On this day in 1947, Indonesian nationalist leader Sukarno declared his country's independence from the Netherlands and became its first president. In 2002, Pope John Paul II arrived in Krakow, Poland on his last visit to his native land. And on this day in 1969, three days of peace, love and music came to a close. Woodstock was the defining event of the 60s. Materialism was out, drug experimentation was in, and Jimi Hendrix closed with his take on the Star Spangled Banner that became the anthem of the generation. On August 17, 1969, the grooviest event in music history the Woodstock Music and Art Fair draws to a close after three days of peace, love and rock and roll in upstate New York. Conceived as three days of peace and music, Woodstock was a product of a partnership between John Roberts, Joel Rosenman, Artie Kornfield, and Michael Lang. Their idea was to make enough money from the event to build a recording studio near the arty New York town of Woodstock. When they couldn't find an appropriate venue in the town itself, the promoters decided to hold the festival on a 600-acre dairy farm in Bethel, New York, some 50 miles from Woodstock, owned by Max Yasker. By the time the weekend of the festival arrived, the group had sold a total of 186,000 tickets and expected no more than 200,000 people to show up. By Friday night, however, thousands of eager early arrivals were pushing against the entrance gates. Fearing they could not control the crowds, the promoters made the decision to open the concert to everyone, free of charge. Close to half a million people attended Woodstock, jamming the roads around Bethel with eight miles of traffic. Soaked by rain and wallowing in the muddy mess of Yasker's fields, young fans best described as hippies euphorically took in the performances of acts like Janis Joplin, Arlo Guthrie, Joe Cocker, Joan Baez, Creedence Clearwater Revival, The Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, Sly and the Family Stone and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. The Who performed in the early morning hours of August 17th, with Roger Daltrey belting out See Me. Feel Me, from the now classic album Tommy just as the sun began to rise. The most memorable moment of the concert for many fans was the closing performance by Jimi Hendrix, who gave a rambling, rocking solo guitar performance of the Star Spangled Banner. With not enough bathroom facilities and first aid tents to accommodate such a huge crowd, many described the atmosphere at the festival as chaotic. There were surprisingly few episodes of violence. Though one teenager was accidentally run over and killed by a tractor and another died from a drug overdose. A number of musicians performed songs expressing their opposition to the Vietnam War, a sentiment that was enthusiastically shared by the vast majority of the audience. Later, the term Woodstock Nation would be used as a general term to describe the youth counterculture of the 1960s. A 25th anniversary celebration of Woodstock took place in 1994 in Saugerties, New York. Known as Woodstock II, the concert featured Bob Dylan and Crosby, Stills and Nash as well as newer acts such as Nine Inch Nails and Green Day. Held over another rainy, muddy weekend, the event drew an estimated 300,000 people. A 50th anniversary festival was planned for 2019, but never came to fruition. And that's this day in history.